Hello and welcome to Pioneer's Talk. My name is Tom Witter, and today I have Paul Penastofer here with me in the studio. Welcome, Paul. Tom, pleasure to be with you today. Paul has been with Primetos Technologies for 20 years. He is responsible for the continuous casting business for flat and long products. And I'm excited because, uh, Paul, you're the first continuous casting expert to sit in this chair. Uh, so um, I was thinking I would start with a somewhat personal question, okay? Nothing too personal, but uh, a little personal. Uh, what fascinates you about the casting of liquid steel? So what's fascinating me with the continuous casting process, and this was the first thing which was fascinating me from the very first day when I joined our company in the continuous casting business was, so the continuous casting process is the process in the entire production chain of steel where we give the liquid steel the first shape. And this is really fascinating to be on the transformation from liquid to solid. So we give the steel the first shape. Uh, if we talk about flat production, we make the slabs, which then will be, then be rolled to coals, for example. It's almost a magical process, right? You have something that's uh, almost like water, and then it's something very, very yeah. solid and hard. Huh. Um, my understanding is that Primetals Technologies is unique or almost unique in our industry um, in terms of leadership and continuous casting. Um, there's technologies that we are renowned for, and I'm sure it was very hard to get to that technological level. Uh, I'm also sure that it's hard to stay uh, ahead of the curve. Um, what are you doing uh, to ensure that continuous casters from Primetals Technologies remain the best in the world? So what we are doing in order to uh still keep the pace in the continuous casting. So on the one hand, we are very much focusing on the continuous casting process itself. Mm. And on the other hand, for sure, as we are a plant builder, we are focusing on the machinery. Uh, we have split the continuous casting machine in modules. We call it technological packages. Mm -hmm. And depending on the demands of the specific client, we're then choosing the right packages, putting them together for the client to make the tailor-made solution he needs. Okay, uh, I have a, a thought experiment for you, uh, Paul. Okay, uh, let's say let's say you have a greenfield project. Okay, meaning there's nothing there. Uh, you can design anything you like, um, and uh, you want to design the state-of-the-art caster um, the world has not seen before. Um, is there any kind of specification, any kind of benchmark you would want that machine to realize? I think the question is a little bit too, too generic because okay. there is not the best caster in the world because it always depends very much what you're going to produce mm. out of the caster and what you're going to produce later on after the cast product is then rolled. But uh, if you want to still make the pace, we can take an example, for example, from fixed lab casting. Yeah? Okay. So some years ago, if we think about curved type machines, so 300 millimeter thickness was somehow the benchmark uh, in thickness, which was cast mm -hmm. on a continuous casting machine. So meaning that you could not go thicker? Yeah, you, you could not go uh -huh. thicker, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and we have uh, done a lot of investigations and process developments together with our clients. And so step by step, we could develop the continuous casting machines in a way that they can produce 400 millimeters thick and above on a curved type continuous casting machine, which gives you, apart from excellent quality, also a reasonable productivity. All right. Uh, my next question was going to be, what can you do with slabs this thick? So it's it's a quality issue. So even better quality, or uh, is can you make different end products from that kind of? Uh... So I think it's uh, it's some kind of both. Okay. So the the the, the thick uh, the slab is uh, if you still remain on the same plate thickness, you can achieve a better quality. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the thicker the slab, the thicker the plate can be, mm -hmm. uh, which is then also. Uh, value add in the later process. All right, I think let's shift gears a little bit. Um, everyone's talking about green steel uh, these days, and I think it will be uh, maybe the most important topic for a couple of years at least. Um, so iron and steel making are the areas where, um, most affected by this issue. Uh, so there's uh, uh, emissions, there's energy requirements. Continuous casting has been arguably greener from the get-go. Um, 
Uh, and I still think that I still wonder if there's things you can do uh, to support the transition to green steel. Is there anything like that? Sure, there's a, there's a lot to do. Okay. So actually we are mainly used uh, to cast slabs out of the BOF route. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now the world is changing and we are uh, seeing that the EF-based uh, steel production route is more and more growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as the EF route is mainly based on the uh, on the scrap, mm -hmm. so the scrap itself brings a lot of residual elements, mm -hmm. yes. which are uh, putting us under challenges uh -huh. in the continuous casting project, for, um, mainly with respect to surface quality. Okay. So that's why we have to improve our continuous uh, our continuous casting process as well as the uh, technological packages in a way uh, to cope with these new challenges we have with this EF-based steel mm -hmm. in order to have at the very end of the machine on the slab surface or the slab itself should have still the same quality as has we had before from the BOF route. Mm -hmm. and I think this is one of the main challenges and the main contributions we can do from continuous casting for the a transition uh, into the carbon neutrality. Okay, well, actually that sounds like you know secrets that no one else knows, right? I mean, so, so you have stuff in the scrap uh, that you can't get rid of uh, and you have to adjust the process so that the slab surface is of a quality that you would target. Um, can you describe how you work with this subpar quality input material is there a secret trick that you can share maybe with the audience uh, everyone loves uh, to learn a secret uh, or is this so super technical that it's, it's hard to describe so i think it's pretty hard to describe it in, okay. in, in a nutshell so it's uh, mainly uh, putting the the right type of the caster there mm -hmm. putting the right packages but moreover to have the operational experience which we gain from a lot of other plants in order to adjust the very little parameters in the continuous casting machine, for example, for the secondary cooling in the right manner in order to uh, produce a, a high quality level of steel even out of this uh, EF based route. Paul, I think we'll conclude uh, with something personal again. Uh, so you've described uh, all the things you're doing to support the transition to electric steel making. You've described technology packages. Um, your ambition to improve quality in casting um, uh, even further. Um, what's next for you? I mean, there's so many different topics. Is there any one thing that you're focusing on um, at this moment? So basically, we are focusing on our running projects. We have to get with our clients. <clears throat> As we all know, uh, the, the supplier market and also the transportation is very difficult and putting everybody That's under a lot true. of pressure. So this is what we have to deal with. Um, to make our projects which are under execution uh, the casters to go into operation as soon as possible. And on the on the other hand, as the world does not stand still, uh, we are still about to find new clients and convince them about our technology. So it's a pleasure for me to bring some of them to a running reference, meaning a running continuous slab caster, mm -hmm. so they can really see. So they can touch it uh, and see that it's really no no touching okay no touching, no touching. maybe not that good idea because it would be uh, probably too hot okay yeah. okay good to know good to know we will bring them there so they can get to inter interaction with the operating personnel they can go into interaction with the quality engineers to talk about the quality which comes out of our casting machines and this is the first hand information we want to have our future clients to receive uh, from from reality because it's more impressive and uh, let's say uh, you can give a much better imagination as you just talk about uh, via some slides or uh, mm -hmm. brochures. So seeing is believing. Seeing and not touching, but seeing and hearing. Seeing and so using, using all senses. All senses. Yeah. Oh, that is that is perfect. Um, so um, I think we'll we'll leave you uh, to that right um, and thank you very much Paul uh, for sitting down with me today uh, thank you thank you uh, for watching uh, this episode uh, we'll be back uh, with another episode shortly um, have a good time until then